Welcome back to Neil Oliver live with me, Bev Turner, this evening. So, new laws in Germany came into force this week which legalised personal possession of cannabis. Since the 1st of April, adults are allowed to carry up to 25 grams of dried cannabis on them and cultivate up to three marijuana plants at home. So, should Britain follow suit? To discuss that, I'm joined by Professor Mike Barnes, a consultant neurologist and Mail on Sunday columnist uh, Peter Hitchens. Good evening, gentlemen. Thank you so much uh, for joining me. Peter, let me start with you here in the studio. Uh, this is Germany seeing sense maybe over something which is effectively decriminalised most places anyway now. Well, it isn't everywhere and I don't see why it's sense. Uh, if this were uh, if this were Germany saying, right, let's abandon all attempts of the past 70 years to get rid of cigarettes and tobacco, everyone would think they were mad. Uh, sim similarly, a, a country which now proposes to legalise a drug which is increasingly correlated uh, with severe incurable mental illness and to some extent also increasingly correlated with violent crime doesn't seem to me to be sense at all. It seems to me to be sheer craziness. The arguments for it are extraordinarily weak. And the, the, the alleged good that it will do, we know from practical experience, it will not do. The advocates of this sort of legalisation always claim that it will in some way enable them to c control the market, to regulate, uh, to decide the levels of dose and to make huge amounts of money out of tax. Mm. But several jurisdictions have already tried this. Colorado and California, notably in the United States, and the whole of Canada. And the result has been that the illegal market has continued to flourish alongside the legal one. I think the latest figures show 33%. Right. Uh, this is government, Canadian government figures. 33% mm. of the trade is still in illicit hands, uh, which is, of course, completely unregulated and untaxed, and therefore also sells at lower prices. It's a nonsense. And people really are going to have to learn quite soon that if we go down this road, once you've legalised a drug mm. and once it then goes into mass use, it's almost impossible to undo the mistake. Professor Mike Barnes, then, what might Germany's logic be to taking this action over cannabis? Well, I think the, the, the logic is, is overwhelming, really, and, and Peter will not be surprised to know that I fundamentally disagree with him. Um, First of all, you can uh, make the, the, the cannabis safer, safer than it is at the moment. Uh, you, you will get rid of impurities to start with. You'll make sure that it's a safe drug to take in safe places. Uh, you will reduce uh, the amount of uh, mental illness as associated with it, and there is some. I don't disagree with that at all. Uh, but you'll be able to control that by controlling the level of THC. Uh, and, the, and the risk of mental illness, I have to say, is very small indeed. If we look at the uh, study in the UK called Drug Science, that's been looking at now nearly 5,000 people with medically prescribed cannabis, uh, there has been not one case, not one case of, of psycho psychopathy in those people. A recent study that showed you have to stop 10,000 men and 29,000 women from smoking cannabis to prevent one episode of psychosis. So yes, it's a risk, but with proper control, it's a very, very small risk. And I have to fundamentally with Peter to say that it, it does not cause um, violence. There is absolutely no evidence of that whatsoever. Uh, Peter, it's a very convincing um, case that Mike Barnes puts forward there. Um, but we know we've got a mental health epidemic, particularly in this country with teens at the moment. Does anybody really know how much of that has been exacerbated by social cannabis use? Well, nobody knows because the research isn't done. Uh, it's not done by the state. It's not done by the universities. There's, there's nobody in this country with any interest in doing research. All the big money is on the side of legalisation. There's enormous amounts of money to be made uh, in the legalisation of this drug. And a huge campaign is underway at the moment also internationally to, to get rid of the, the treaties, the United Nations treaties dating back to the 1930s, which actually make it illegal in the first place. And once they can do that, then the, the, then the whole of the United States, for instance, and this country, which, is, which are members of the United Nations Security Council, uh, could actually legalize openly. But they, they, they can't do it at the moment. And the reason for this relentless campaign is because of the billions that can be made out of it. This is the next big tobacco. And I, I have to challenge some things which, which, which Mike Barnes has just said, uh, the evidence uh, of, of, the, uh, of the dangers of marijuana, first of all, comes from the, the, the fact that it's used very widely, particularly in schools at the moment. I'm, I know of one case, and I, I direct everybody who's complacent about this to the extraordinary book by, by, by Patrick 
uh, by, by Patrick Coburn and his son Henry, called Henry's Demons. Henry attended a very nice Canterbury Grammar School in the Garden of England in Kent. And at the age of 11 was introduced to marijuana and very regrettably he became severely mentally ill as a result. And I don't think there's really very much question in anybody's mind who was involved. Well, 11 well, is young. It, was, it is young, you're right, but that is where an awful lot of the current market is in, in, in schools at the ages as low as 11. The other thing is what is generally true about legalization or decriminalization, decriminalization of the drug is it doesn't hugely increase the number of people who take it. What it does do is it increases the number of people who take it regularly and the amount that they take. And I think there's a lot of complacency about this. I did some research a few years ago for my book on the subject about the, the complacent rubbish which was emitted by big tobacco about the, the, the dangers of lung cancer from that in the 1950s and early, and early 60s. And the same sort of bilge, I'm afraid, was talked about how there's really nothing to worry about. On the issue of violence, what I will say is that, the, again, there's no study. I've, I've often tried to get the police to tell me about the, whether there's any evidence of drug use of violent criminals, and they won't even talk about mm. it because the police themselves have given up enforcing the law. There is one very closely studied subset of violent crime, that is mass killings, either by t uh, terrorists in Europe or school shootings in the United States, almost invariably. The culprit is a long-term user of marijuana. Mike, just respond to that, please. Mike Barnes. Yeah, well, you know, I think, Peter, unfortunately, um, it collapses together the people with already existing mental illness who go to around you mass killings and such like. One can't doubt that. And they happen to have cannabis. There's no direct link. There is no full stop direct link between cannabis and violence. I'm not going to say people who are violent or mentally ill don't take cannabis. Of course, some do. Some drink alcohol. Some take cornflakes in the morning. But there's not a direct link between cannabis and violence. I have to. Also, I should say. Can I say I have to treat. I have to treat Mike Barnes as a serious person. When he says nobody, nobody gets uh, nobody gets mental illness or or indulges in violent no, no, crime I'm as a result of eating cornflakes, he's not being a serious person. We know perfectly well. You know perfectly well. You're well well equipped to, to, to know it. That that marijuana is a major psychotropic drug with huge effects on the human brain, and cornflakes are not. It's a silly thing to say. And it demeans you to say it. You also know perfectly well that the reason why there's so little evidence is because there's so little study. And I, as I said just now and made it perfectly clear, there is so little study because who has any in interest in there being such a study? There is a huge industry hoping to make enormous amounts of money. The last thing it needs is lots of definitive studies linking marijuana with, with lifelong incurable mental illness and other studies linking it with violent crime. Go to the website Attacker Smoke Cannabis and see just how many crimes are reported in the local newspapers of this country week after week after week in which the violent person is a long-term user of marijuana and tell go me on, there's no connection. Go on, Mike. Respond to Peter. Yeah. I'm really sorry to, to, to break the point. There is no direct connection between cannabis and violence. I'm not saying people who are violent have not taken cannabis. I'm not saying cannabis. I'm not complacent about it at all. There is mental health issues with long-term cannabis use, but properly controlled, that risk is small. It's very small. And honestly, I don't know of any industry that's run better by criminals. Why, if, if there is those issues there, and there are those issues there, I think they're overinflated, but there are those issues there. For heaven's sake, let's run it properly. Let's regulate it properly. Uh, if there's a tax income to be had, let the government have that tax income rather than the criminal fraternity. If there's jobs to be had, as about 100,000 jobs in the UK, let the proper economic market have those jobs rather than the criminal fraternity. So I think, yes, there are risks to it. I'm not being complacent at all, uh, but those risks are minimal, and I think it's better to control and contain those risks by making it legal. And One therefore, would, people use yeah. it for what, Mike? And what would people use cannabis for then, even if it was legalised? Well, I, I, I do want to make quickly, if I may, is actually, it may surprise people that I'm not in favour of immediate legalisation of cannabis because we've got to get the medical market right first. And I was a helpful part of getting the, the medical law changed back in 2018. And now there's 37,000 people prescribed medical cannabis with a great deal of benefit for chronic pain, chronic anxiety, and of course the young children with epilepsy. But we haven't got that right yet. There's about 1.8 million medical users of cannabis in this country, and we've got 37,000 prescribed. So we've got a long way to go before we get the medical side right. Mm. And that's what I want to do before we get the, the uh, legal market. 
So, Peter, would you be in favour of getting the medical market for cannabis in, a, in better shape and more readily available? I think it's wholly irrelevant. Uh, it may be that marijuana uh, can be used as a medicine. I think the, the jury is ultimately out on it. I know some, the Home Office has, right. been, the home office has been very good about, about letting experiments take place. And indeed, as the, 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 there are a couple of, of THC-based medicines available under certain strict prescription in, in this country. Whether they work or not, I don't know. I do know that the principal uh, campaigner for, for cannabis legalization in the United States, Keith Stroop of Normal, said in 1979, we will use medical marijuana as a red herring to give pot a good name. And I think that's fundamentally what the medical marijuana, uh, the medical ma marijuana issue is about. We should stick to the issue of whether it should be legalized for recreational use, which is what is really a question, in question here. And when Mike Barnes says, why not let the government get taxes? Why not put it in the hands of business? Uh, what legalized marijuana means is big marijuana. It means a lot more of it. It means advertising. Uh, mm. The Proposition 64, which was the, the, the model for marijuana legalization in, in California and the United States, was specific about demanding the freedom to advertise. Remember how many years it took uh, to, to, to prevent big tobacco from advertising in this country. What you're basically proposing is the creation of a new big tobacco uh, with a very, very dangerous drug on widespread sale by big organizations, with the government becoming committed to its continued sale because of mm. its tax revenue. Uh, basically, a, a deeply immoral plan because of the huge known dangers of this drug and other dangers which will certainly become known mm. if you are successful. OK, well, thank you, gentlemen. Mike Barnes, who's giving pot a good name, as Peter said, and trying very hard with the medicinal community at the very least. And Peter mm -hmm. Hitchens, who clearly very much disagrees. Gentlemen, thank you so much.